We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. It brings both pros and cons to the financial services sector. While businesses can boost efficiency, security, and compliance with AI solutions, well, organized gangs can also use AI to turbocharge their activities. What can banks do to leverage the benefits and mitigate the risks? To look at this in more detail, we're joined by Caroline Nguyi, a Global Head Conduct, Financial Crime and Compliance Advisory, Transaction Banking and Africa at Standard Chartered, and Danielle Sharp, Head of Financial Institutions, Clearing Product at Standard Chartered. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you for taking the time with us here on Cybos TV. Uh, Danielle, I'm going to start with you. Uh, how is AI currently being deployed in the financial services? I think we touched on it at the start. Um, you know, Swift recently forecast that 700 million transactions every year are being impacted by friction, um, and that costs the industry up to two billion. And fraud, um, you know, last year alone, that cost the industry 485 billion. So, particularly in those two areas, um, so both efficiency, um, reducing friction, and of course improving the compliance programs within the financial industry, it's where we're seeing a lot of improvement. But Caroline, I mean, um, when we see a look at all of these initiatives being done, emerging technologies also brings with us some risks. Um, criminals are also using AI as well. Yes, 100% Angie, and it's it's highly unfortunate. And the risk to the criminals is negligible when it goes wrong relative to the risk to financial services uh, or any other institution. And what we are seeing is a lot of phishing scams, uh, either through email or links to messages, uh, which is actually using natural language and very difficult to detect uh, when they are using these AI tools uh, to come up with these uh, messages. We're also seeing a lot of uh, use of deep fake, uh, and this is an area of uh, growing uh, and increasing um, a threat, I would say, whereby voice and images are being used uh, to impersonate individuals. Uh, and this is also causing a lot of risk to organizations. We have seen it in the press. Uh, some of uh, the recent uh, organizations that have actually uh, lost uh, funds because of this image uh, impersonalization. And uh, last but not least, we are also seeing uh, the use of uh, synthetic um, uh, documentation uh, whereby individuals' identity is also uh, at threat of being stolen uh, through these uh, deep fake uh, channels, mm. uh, which is highly unfortunate. And uh, in the in the world of finance, of course, we're in the business of uh, banking as a service, and it is unfortunate that fraud as a service is a real threat today. Mm. I'd like to get both your takes on this, if I may. How are banks using AI to combat uh, uh, cybercrime, really, at this, at this moment in time? Uh, I'll start with you, Danielle. So cybercrime, financial crime, um, if I talk for standard chartered, we're using AI um, and specifically machine learning and large language models in our transaction screening and transaction monitoring processes. So that essentially means how do we enable our models to learn from some of the dispositions that we've taken by humans in the past, such that that can t take the activity on our behalf um, from a machine learning point of view. I think that's... Um, the main area of focus for us right now, because certainly from an AI perspective, the Pope was in Singapore not that long ago, and even he spoke about making sure that we don't fall victim to the perhaps biased ways of um, using AI or hallucinating ways of using generative AI. Yeah. And whilst regulators are very much, uh, they're asking us actually to, to start pursuing this and consider how we can use it, we are entirely focused on how we do that in a responsible way. Yeah. Colin? Uh, yes, I totally agree with that, Danielle. Uh, what I would add to that is uh, financial institutions are very concerned about ethics. Uh, and so as we continue to deploy these tools uh, and also look at emerging technologies, we want to ensure that the data uh, that we are using, which is our clients' data, they are trusting us with their data, that it's used in a responsible way uh, and that there's full transparency and understanding of how that data is being utilized uh, in this model. Well, customers really around the world expect their banks to protect their information, protect all of that. But with the advent of AI and all of the criminalization that you've outlined is really concerning. The deep fakes, somebody who could sound like me could suddenly in, you know, impersonate me. So what are the specific things that you're doing, that the bank is doing to really counter uh, a lot of these, these criminal uses of, of technology? 
I'll take this in terms of uh, really looking at the client and yeah. getting the clients to also understand what these threats are and what they look like. Uh, so we do spend a lot of time uh, talking to clients, spending uh, time writing to clients on given facts on what these examples look like in terms of whether it's a phishing email, uh, really giving uh, clients an opportunity uh, to also self-police uh, and self-manage uh, and also to be able to report to us directly uh, when they see these patterns uh, so that we can take that into account. Uh, we also take into account uh, our staff and getting that educational piece to our employees, but at the same time looking at uh, upskilling uh, employees on the use of these technologies as well, because we have to uh, grow from within, which is uh, really important as well. Yeah. Good point. And we could get both your thoughts on this final question, uh, but I, I'll go back over to, to Danielle perhaps at first. Um, for many, AI is still very new, uh, but how do and indeed how should banks jump on the AI bandwagon? And, and what should be, they be mindful of in doing so at the moment? I truly believe we have no choice. Um, I don't think AI is going to replace the job of um, all of our bankers, but I do believe that if you don't come up to speed with how AI can be deployed and retune your skill set accordingly, then you might be at risk of losing your job. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's very much around ensuring that you're considerate about where and how and when you can deploy that. So are we yet comfortable that we can use AI to take decisions on behalf of consumers, um, noting that we need their consent, noting that we need to be very clear on how the machines are taking decisions for them? I think we're, we're still working through that journey. But can we use it to improve efficiency in operations? Can we improve, um, use it to improve financial crime compliance and the speed in which we can deal with information? Yes, I, I, I do believe that we are, you know, well advanced on that journey. And I would urge institutions to start thinking along those lines also. And Caroline, how would you add to that? Yes, uh, to add to that, I would uh, look at the skills-based uh, way in which we think of our employee work base. So we consider ourselves a very skills-based organization because the world's changing. Uh, we value our employees. We want our employees to grow with us. And it's very important that their time is used in a uh, very skillful way uh, and so where the tools are very important and as Danielle highlighted they will release uh, more uh, opportunity for the workforce to be looking at more intelligence uh, through the data that we receive from these tools and really deploying that back to our clients to be able to educate them as I said earlier on uh, as well as uh, be able to look at the models much more wisely. It's not only keeping up, but keeping in front of 100%. this technology 100%. adoption. Yeah. Thank you so much both for joining us on Cybos TV and for these insights on this new technology. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was Carolyn Ngudu, Global Head Conduct Financial Crime and Compliance Advisory, Transaction Banking in Africa at Standard Chartered. And of course, Daniel Sharp, Head of Financial Institutions Clearing Product at Standard Chartered. Thank you both for coming in to speak with us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, it. Appreciate your time. Thank you.